head coach Dirk Cutter here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Coach? I'm doing good, Rich. Thanks for having me. You know, appreciate you being on. What what has gone down over the last three weeks to cause the turnaround that we've seen? Well, I think you you said it when when you guys left town. It sparked us. When you mean that was a joke, Rich. That was a joke. I was I was about Come to sit now. there. I'm like, well, Stay wait a minute. Did what did I leave? You, what did I leave behind there? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you I like you that. Sound in that intro, like uh, you left us in shambles. So I, I thought I'd just go ahead and give you credit. Oh wow! No, I'll, I'll be honest with you. When when we left that night, we thought in in many ways we were talking about it going away. That you know, Jameis is coming on strong, and your team that <laughs> night. Uh, that night was a team that that might not have a shot in the division, but you certainly do. There's no question about it, Coach. Well, you know, the NFL is such a week-to-week league. People tend to forget. I mean, uh, we actually beat Atlanta in the first game of the year at their at their place. Indeed. And uh, you know, we didn't we didn't have our best night when you guys were here. Uh, we you know we didn't we just didn't get it done that night. We ran into Atlanta was Atlanta was playing very well. We didn't play as well as we can and. Uh, sometimes, sometimes that happens. I mean, in, in this league, everybody's good. I mean, there's no, there's no easy ones. And since then, though, we we've, we've been able to, to put uh, three in a row together, uh, doing a good job of playing complementary football. Our defense has really been setting the pace by taking the football away. Uh, Jameis and Mike Evans have had a had a nice little connection going, and we got Doug Martin back. We got you know we're one of those teams. And there's a lot of teams with injury issues in this league, but. We're a team that had had our injury issues a little bit earlier, and we're getting a little bit healthier here, and uh, it's it's showing up in our performance. Yeah, I mean, Jameis in that week one win in Atlanta, four touchdowns to four different receivers, and then the last seven games, 14 touchdowns, three interceptions. What what has happened with his development so far this year that, that you think has helped with the turnaround as we've been talking about? Well, it, it's really similar to last year. Jameis follows, followed a very similar pattern is – we just turned the ball over to, in the, the first four games of the season. We turned the ball over so much and put our defense in horrendous field position, uh, uh, you know, short fields. And after game four, Jameis, same as uh, last season, did just did a much better job of taking care of the football, making great decisions, uh, getting off his number one, getting through, getting through his progressions, even running the ball more when, when things weren't going uh, right in the passing game. And all of a sudden, that, that helps your defense. We we started running the ball a little bit better and keeping our defense off the field more, making teams go go the long way. And then our defense, we at one point we hadn't. I think we were through four games. We had zero takeaways. Our team, as a team, we were at minus nine after week four. And uh, since since that time, I think we're plus twelve. And uh, you know, it's still turnover still comes down to the number one correlation to winning losing in in any football league. Dirk Cutter, Tampa Bay Buccaneers head coach, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. And seeing Jameis Winston talk to the team after wins and seeing him talk to them just in general, even sometimes after losses, he's an intense young man. Where does he rank in terms of leaders that you've been around, college or pros, Coach? Well, he's he's, he's way up there. And, you know, for anybody that considers themselves to be old school, Jameis Jameis is an old school leader. Uh, he he's just so beyond his years, and he's not afraid to put his emotions out there. I think I think today uh, guys have a tendency to not want to speak from the heart as often as Jameis does. And you know, I go back all the way to Jameis's dad, and the, you know, Jameis's dad coached him growing up, and uh, then Jimbo Fisher at Florida State, the, the things that they instilled in him, the intangible side of playing quarterback, leadership, toughness, study habits. Uh, you know, Jameis really understands the game, and he, he just really understands people. I mean, he has a great way of saying what people need to hear when they need to hear it. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's refreshing uh, because you just, you just don't see it. It's rare. And and how does that help you try and keep hope alive, if you will, when when games are not going in your direction? Certainly, like the loss at home against Oakland, and then the Thursday night game, and now the turnaround that's happened since then. Well, first, having having the face of your franchise, your your quarterback being the leader of your football team, that that's a. Uh, 
naturally a good thing. Second, you know, you have to understand every team in the NFL is good. I mean, uh, you know, Oakland's one of the best teams in the league, one of the hottest teams, one of the best teams. I mean, there's, we were right there in that game, and you know there was an unfortunate play right there at the end. If not, if not for that one play in the fourth quarter, we win that game. Mm-hmm. And you know we can't we can't cry about spilled milk. I mean, you can't you can't change what happens. And uh, you know you mentioned hope. I mean, we we try not to be about hope. We try to be about uh, performance and execution. And I think that's one of the things we've improved at on here is. You know, sometimes teams that have been have been down for a while, they, they tend to fall into uh, here we go again mentality. And I, I think we're slowly getting out of that, saying no, we we're not going into games hoping to win. We're going we're going into games uh, competing to win. Um, it's still it's still week to week. I mean, we we got a long ways to go. We can get so much better, and I mean, we got a we got a huge challenge this week going on the mm-hmm. road to San Diego. Yeah, and, and and in terms of competitors, you you know, I mean, Philip Rivers is 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 up there. There's no question about that. What what challenges do you face when you try and stop him? And of course, there's Joey Bosa on the other side of the line. Yeah, well, you just said it. I mean, Philip Rivers probably never gets as much credit as he should for what a fantastic player he is. I mean, he's just a lot of fun to watch. Uh, you know, he's Peyton Manning that hasn't been on maybe as good a teams over the years. Uh, great competitor you know incredible uh anticipation and touch and then on the defensive side of the ball you mentioned joey bosa he missed a lot of time early but he's really playing well right now and then uh ingram on the other side you know he's having a great year and uh, one of the one of the best rushers in this league san diego really does a good job of uh, mixing their defenses up and they do a really good job of putting pressure on not only putting pressure but hitting your quarterback i mean you know, that's one of your, your major issues when you play the Chargers is how are you going to keep your quarterback clean? Dirk Carter joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. A couple more minutes left with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers head coach. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you've seen the headlines from the West Coast with Eric Dickerson and the Los Angeles Rams, a Hall of Famer, um, and what's going on with the team and him on the sidelines, et cetera. And you've got a team that has a lot of – a lot of gold jackets sometimes strolling around that sideline. Sap, you have Derek Brooks, who's extremely involved in the community there. What is your philosophy on weaving in the Hall of Famers and, and having them around your team in Tampa, Coach? Well, it's, it's funny you mention that because both Warren Sapp and Derek Brooks were, were both on our sideline last week for the, for the Seattle game, and it was a crucial time in the fourth quarter. Our defense was out on the field, and uh, for whatever reason, I glanced over my right shoulder and, there was Derek Brooks 10 yards away from me in a suit. And the first thing that popped into my head was, can he go in and play right now? <laughs> we, we could have used him. And, uh, you know, those, those two guys in particular, you know, have, have been great. They've been very supportive. Uh, you know, when they're around, uh, they talk to the players. Uh, Warren actually traveled with the team, with, our, with the sponsorship group, to one of our away games earlier. Uh, Rondé Barber is another, another former mm-hmm. player who's – who's been around a lot. He's busy now doing games, but he's around a lot in the preseason and, and the off season. And I mean, shoot, of course you look up in our uh, ring of honor, John Lynch, another guy that uh, has been around was just back. Uh, Doug Williams was back last year. I mean, Tampa Bay, it's been a while, but I mean, Tampa Bay had some great teams and uh, you know, Tony Dungy still lives in town. John Gruden still lives in town. And uh, you know, those, those guys have all uh, put in good plugs for us and, you know, we we'd always w- want to welcome those guys when they were around. Even even the Buck players that weren't great, <laughs> but uh, you know, th- there's tradition here, and uh, it's our job to try to try to get back to it. And that Seattle win was the was the first time in my time in Tampa. I mean, the, the crowd was awesome. That was that was what a uh, a football town crowd. I mean, you could feel it. Our players felt it, and so we welcome having those guys as much as we can get them around. Well, we were. Uh, I was assuming um, that I did have a hand in your um, in your three game winning streak just by merely leaving town. So I appreciate you coming on this show and helping confirm that. <laughs> yeah, coach. I just Thank wanted you. to verify that. I, I was, yeah. you know, it's always uh, about you know. It's always about the person at hand. They all have a mm-hmm. have a say in it. And uh, mm-hmm. 
you know, when, <laughs> so we hope you don't come back uh, to, anytime soon. I don't know. That's, okay. that's, probably, that's probably too harsh. No, it's okay. I understand what you mean, though, when you say that. So, But thanks <laughs> for coming just, on, Coach. I appreciate, appreciate you having me, and uh, have a great game tonight. You too. Thank you. That's uh, uh, Dirk Cutter. Or have a great game on Sunday in San Diego, right here on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.